Today's podcast, like they all are, are brought to you by the Design Recharge patrons. You can be one of these people. These people make a huge difference in the podcast. Um, they come and are able to support the show in a way that is, even just for a dollar or five dollars, um, you get extra content if you do a little bit more. You get a get to do challenges with us. We have some neat challenges for next year coming up, so I'm real excited. And you can uh, find out more or become a patron at patreon.com slash Diane Gibbs. Now, on with the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Design Recharge. I'm your host, Diane Gibbs, and this is episode 322, and it's the last interview of the year. I take December off. Um, and I'm excited about taking December off, but next week is just going to be me and we're going to talk about the power station, which Dustin's in, in that as well. Anyway, so Carrie's here and Michael's here and Amy, Amy Lyons and Regime. And so I'm sure some other people will be coming in. Please tell us where you're coming from. I know where all y'all are coming from. Amy's in North Carolina and Raleigh. Carrie's in on the other side of the bay outside of Mobile. Michael's in Houston. Josh Gooch is in North Carolina outside of Charlotte, but some little town that I can't ever remember, and Regime's in uh, Columbus, Georgia, and Dustin is outside of Portland, and I'm in Mobile also. So we're going to get started. Um, one of the things Dustin and I were talking about a couple weeks ago was the idea of holiday mindset, but then we were also talking about grow, growing pains, and you've been in business for how many years, Dustin? Seven years, I think. So 2012, you started your business. Yeah. Okay, so this year you had told me that this has been the most growth, maybe not sales-wise, or maybe it is sales-wise, but just so many growing pains. There's In this year, you have grown, you've done more things as a business in your business than you had before. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, so I, I think this is going to be our best year, but not our biggest in terms of financial growth. That was probably last year, but in terms of all sorts of things, you know, you start, lots of people start businesses and they're, and they're interested in something like you're a designer. You, next thing you know, you have a branding agency. Like I know um, the guy from Focus Lab, that was the situation. It was just him and his friend. And the next thing you know, there's like 25 people working there or something like that. So I had to um, make my first like salaried employee, started using real a real payroll company, started doing real ads. I uh, got a project manager, just, I feel like there was something else too. Just a lot of like stuff that like is kind of scary and you're not really sure how it's going to work. I had to talk to a lot of lawyers to get things in place and whatnot. Um, yeah, it was intense. So with all these changes, because this is something hopefully we get to. So you really, for many years, you had uh, Suzanne and you used other contractors. And then this was the year you went full time with Suzanne. This was this is a big step for a small company because there's lots of other things you now have to deal with that you weren't having to deal with before. So for Suzanne, it makes it a little easier on taxes or anybody else that you have as an employee instead of giving or a 1099 or any employee you give them now they have payroll and taxes get taken out and all the things that have to go into that but it's different than what it was before right you had maybe somebody doing accounting but it wasn't the same and that's really a big step so what was it that pushed you over the edge to do that do you think what it, or what's a normal thing that people why would people start doing that um good question <laughs> sorry i didn't write that down <laughs> oh no you're good um well with, with suzanne i mean suzanne has actually been full t full time with me for a couple years and then it just sort of occurred to me or maybe she made it occur to me um that she'd been you know working with me for 40 hours a week as a contractor i was her main source of income and it just made sense that um, well, by definition, like after a certain period of time, that person becomes an employee, you know, like they, they should be an employee. And I shouldn't say they become one. Um, they should be one. Uh, so that was why. And um, that has advantages, obviously, for her and it has advantages um, for me, too. But there's hoops to jump through because she's not in Oregon or she's not in Washington, right? That was so having a remote worker that's full time was more than you thought, but you got through it, right? So what was a hurdle in that respect that you didn't expect to happen? 
Yeah. Well, one hurdle is you have to, you have to have someone go on salary. You have to have them sign a contract. So then a lawyer has to make up a contract and then you have to go back, you know, especially with the first employee, when you're really trailblazing, you have to figure out what, what's fair to offer people. What is at my size of a company? What is not reasonable for me to offer? And that was all hard. And of course, everything has to go to a lawyer. And so it's kind of like this three-way conversation with a lawyer, uh, your first employee, and myself. And it just takes a long time. And then it is surprisingly hard to do. I know payroll is so boring. But it's surprisingly hard to do payroll in a different state. Um, mm. You have to actually organize your company in that state to do payroll, which is crazy to me. So really, you learned a lot about now you won't be as hard if you have to have if you have another remote worker, if you had to do something in their state. Now, you know, it's kind of like you had the worst case scenario from the get go. Because nobody was because it was having a remote worker that wasn't in your same state. Right. Yeah. And then like, how do you watch somebody that's not in the same state and typically in employee relationships uh, employer employee relationships, you can, they work in a space that you provide them. So how are you watching them? What do you pay for? It was just, and, and because of the unique nature of the business, it was just like this kind of like coming up with this whole way. How do you get employees for a business that sells just downloads? It's, it was, it's weird. But you got through it, right? We did. One of, yeah. One of the best things you told me um, and it's hard when it's just you and one other person. One of the best things, my mom's here now. Hey, mom, um, was <laughs> that you, the project manager, because there's all these balls. You're doing all these things. You have all these different sources of income. It's not just retro supply. You have passive income for designers. You do webinars. You do courses. You do digital products. You also have physical products. So there's a lot of things for you to keep up with. And it's a lot of things rolling. So a project manager, why was that such a critical role? Did you think it would be such a critical role? No, I, I didn't realize it until, what was your friend's, I, I'm forgetting his first name from Focus Lab. Eric. Eric, Eric okay. Regan. Yeah. So, so you had recommended that I talk to Eric uh, from Focus Lab. So I talked to Eric and he said, you know, it sounds really weird when you just have one employee, but a project manager can be really helpful, which doesn't make sense because you're like, well, who are you going to manage? There's one person. Like, I can't manage one person. That's how inadequate I am. <laughs> um, all right, let me turn this off. And, um, but he was like, yeah, because you end up just doing so much stuff to manage stuff. And, um, and I'm horrible at that. Like, I like writing marketing emails. I like making the products. I like finding artists and doing all that stuff. I'm not good at putting together to-do lists and scheduling times. I mean, I barely got here on time, Diane. You know how I am. So, I mean, I'm just not a person to do that. And when you have an employee and all of a sudden you realize, wow, this person, I don't know, it feels like more like this person is relying on me to make the business successful so they can pay their bills. And you also are like, it costs more to have an employee. There's a lot more expenses to an employee than a contractor. And that makes you think, okay, let's get someone to manage myself and the employee because that extracts more value out of the employee. I know that sounds very like, like humans are like robot resource type things. Like, but you want to extract as much value as possible. And that works better if there's to-do lists and organize all the trains are running on time. Well, and it's also something you recognize as maybe not your best skill and it's helped you stay on track too. So this person who, this person's just a contractor, right? Yeah. And so then you can, um, but having them on, it's not like they're working probably 40 hours a week, but they're just staying on top of what's going on, on all the different balls that you have up in the air. Right. Yeah. And they're, and they're feeling a, um, a position that I can't fill and an employee can't fill, which is holding my own self accountable. So I'm going to be super lenient on myself if I can. And an employee is probably not going to feel like comfortable and I'm not going to super love it if like an employee is giving me assignments. So <laughs> having someone that you hire and you literally say, please be the boss of me, mm. tell me when to get things done. And then when I, if I don't, like there's social repercussions to it has made me much more uh, productive 
But it's also lighten the load because then it's not on you to have to remember everything, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So everything is like being aligned. And this person is very much a person. Her name is Megan. And she's very much just, I don't, need, I don't know what the personality type is. Maybe someone, if someone in the comments can tell me, I don't know what you call that personality type, but yeah, just super organized. Someone that's going to make lists, someone that's going to put things in buckets, someone that would have written things down in a paper planner back in the day and carried those around. Someone that would have had a Rolodex. Right. Yeah. So then do you, so with these, all these changes and going through growing pains, what would you tell somebody like one of us that's in the chat, that's in that, in a growing stage or, but maybe we're not ready to hire somebody full time, but maybe cause the project manager is not full time, but what would you say is, is some of the key things to kind of take away for somebody who's in this position? That's considering hiring someone? Or, or just experiencing growing pains. They can't do everything themselves because that was kind of where you were back, you know, in 2016. You couldn't do everything yourself. You had, you know, people that were working for you that were doing certain things, but it was still maybe not 40 hours a week. You know, you, you eased into having a contractor on a regular basis and then you eased into having a full-time contractor, right? What would you tell somebody at different stages, I guess? Yeah, I would say something, actually, I'm going to pull up. I have this, I had, I had written down a couple of list of things that I felt like I'd learned um, this year. So the first one was um, no, listen, listen to your body and your mind. So if you feel constantly stressed, if you feel out of your depth all the time, then it, don't think that, oh, I'm being lazy or whatever. That's how you feel. You can't change that. So that, that's a sign that you need to do something different. So listen to how you feel or listen to your own self and how you feel about things. Don't suppress that. I think I did that forever. I thought, oh, I'm, I'm weak or I'm whatever for not doing that. Um, and ask yourself constantly, like, do I need to be doing this or could someone else do this? I think mm. they say 70% is good. So if someone can do it, you can choose the number, right? Like my number tends to be, can someone do this 75, 80% ideally, as well as I can. If they can do it 80% as good as I can, then get rid of it because there's so much stuff to do. You only want to be doing the stuff that only you can do. Right. Right. Okay. So that's perfect. That's a great one. So it kind of leads us into what we are talking about. Maybe you're okay talking about this. If you don't just say the safe word, which is rooster. Okay. okay. Um, but you talked okay. to me about this yesterday um, in a, a message and you said, you know, I feel like there's, there's a point in our life at, where we are just working to, to the job or the, the business is running our lives, right? So we, we, the goal is not for you to work and have the business forever. You kind of, there is a point where you would like to retire and enjoy your life. So if your business is running your life so that you're working every night and you're away from your kids and you're away from your wife or you, this would not be worth it. And there's, there have been times where you have had times where you've definitely had to put more time into your business, right? Yeah. So, I don't know where I'm going with my question, but when you were just saying that, I was like, oh, this kind of feeds into what you were saying because you got real passionate about it. And I do think that there's, there is more, there should be more than just working, right? Yeah. So I, I, I don't remember, for you guys listening, sometimes I go off on very pessimistic rants to- um, This wasn't pessimistic, I didn't well, think. Well, I go on both. Sometimes I go on super pessimistic ones, super, sometimes I go on super optimistic ones. And um, one thing that I just realized was that a business is a business will kill you, literally. I don't mean that like as a metaphor. Like a business will literally kill you if you let it be the one that takes you for the walk. You know, like imagine like you have like some sort of gigantic beast on a leash. Mm -hmm. If if you just let it pull you wherever, it will pull you around and it will eventually devour you. You know, you have to decide this is when like we stop, this is when we do this or that because businesses, um, they're, what's the word, like insatiable. Mm -hmm. they, they, there's always a new product you can put out. There's always a new subscription you can make. There's always one more partner email you can send. There's always one more customer support email to make you feel like you're going to get enough uh, five-star reviews to keep yourself in business. And if you let the business dictate how much you work, it will literally work you until someone finds you 
face down with your head in the keyboard dead. I know that sounds like a joke, but I'm serious. A business will kill you. So you really have to like be like, hey, like I have to stop it. Like this business will not stop it. Like my wife, my wife will always ask, are you done with work? She doesn't ask anymore, but she used to. She'd say like, are you done? And I'm like, honey, I'm never done. Right. It just continues on forever. <laughs> So do you think that that, because I do, I think that, I mean, it is really kind of a strong language maybe, but I also think that it's, um, it's really impactful to think about it like this as that I have this vision of this beast on a leash, right? And you really have to be the one in control. You have to say, so saying no, has that always been something that you've been good at or is that something you got good at when? No, I'm horrible at it. I don't know if I've necessarily even gotten good at it. I think I've gotten a little more frequent at it. It's funny because saying no to things, I don't think you even notice when you don't say no to things, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, example, okay, an example. Right before we did, right before we got on here, um, my website went down, but I was going to send an email for a pre-Black Friday promo, right? So then I was running late. And then I thought, can I fit this email in to send it? And I decided, no, I'm not going to. That's going to cost me money because I'm not sending it out. But you, you see it? Like, it's almost hard to see. I had to say no to sending it in the morning, even though the rule in my brain was I should. So I said no to it. And the no cost me. Like, it cost me that I didn't get to make money this morning. So uh, I think they're sneaky. I think mm -hmm. that saying no is sneaky. You don't even see it coming. Someone says something, it's a very mundane request. Can you do this? Can you do that? You know, um, Suzanne this morning said, can you, can you please share the copy for these emails with me? Sounds like a little request, but they add up. And I was like, no, you don't need them. You just, just, just put the titles and artwork in. There's no need for the copy. Um, because little stuff adds up. It, it seems little, but then you got to copy and paste it. Then you got to post it somewhere. Then you got to let her know. Then she's going to ask questions and whoever the person is, you know, it, not, not Suzanne necessarily, but Anybody. All those little things. Yeah, because it, it doesn't feel like a yes or no, but you have to say no. Like, no, I'm not going to do that. Well, and you also have to make a decision for your business, right? Like, is this really critical that I send this email? Is it really critical that your website gets up? Yes. Yep. That'd be worth it. Let's save, save that time, right? Um, but there are certain things that you can say no to or not now, right? It's just like your kids probably like, I'm, it's a no. If you want a yes or no, then you can get one of those. But sometimes it's just not, it's a not now. Right? Right. I think, yeah. I think my mom used to say that to me. <laughs> not now. And I think, I think Ryan Holiday, the, the guy here with the Obstacle is the Way and some of those other books, he had said, he had said you know, remember um, every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. Mm -hmm. So I say yes to the extra customer emails or the deadline that the new project manager gave me that it's five o'clock and I feel like I can't hit, then I'm saying no to my kids. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what, what other kind of positions did you add this year? Was there any other kind of positions? Yeah. So we have, um, Suzanne is our head of product creation. So she does that. We have a project manager. We just, uh, a lot of these people aren't hired. Some of them, they're contractors, but they're, um, you know, like it cost a good amount of money and I don't know how, how to do it yet. Um, we have a ad agency where we have two people um, that work for us throughout the month and um, do targeted ads, retargeting ads. So that's exciting. Um, officially have an, an IP copyright lawyer that's on retainer. Uh, what does that mean? Intellectual property copyright attorney. So can you, so that means somebody's using your stuff and they're not paying for it? Yeah, it can mean like a, a deal with somebody where we're partnering with someone to sell something and they're writing up an agreement just to make sure we're both on the same page. But it can also mean like when I went to Taco Bell and then I saw uh, our Palm Canyon Drive font and the different stuff on all over Taco Bell. And I realized that I didn't remember getting a big check from Taco Bell for putting the font all over everything that they own. So, you know, and I was like, I don't know what to do, you know, but you talk to an, to an IP attorney and he's like, oh man, he's like, I can't swing a cat without hitting somebody that works for Taco Bell. He's like, and they're owned by Pepsi. He's like, we'll get them to pay. So, um, yeah, it's kind of like a little sick among people. So how do we know so that we're not ever doing that? So if I buy a license of Palm Canyon for me 
and my company, then I can use that for my customers or how does that work? So that we make sure we're not making any problems. Yeah, or does well, Taco Bell have to have to own it and then buy enough for all their designers? Well, yeah, see, that's the thing. That's the tricky thing, where, which is why you kind of need an IP attorney because um, it depends, you know, you have to look at the terms on each site. So for instance, creative market has terms that I can't change. So if you look at creative markets and you buy it from them, or if you buy a font from my fonts, their terms are going to be different than if you buy something from someone's individual site, you know, like Simon Walker, he has a fantastic type site called um, beasts of England. He has a license on there. It's probably very different than if he sells it, say on my mm. fonts. Mm -hmm. um, and so some people sell it by seat. Some people sell it by uh, project. Some people sell it by how many impressions it gets. Mm. And that's the other thing too. Like I don't think Taco Bell paid me, but maybe they found some clever way to get it for super cheap through some third party site that I'm unaware of, but you don't know because if they didn't, then you kind of got them, you know, um, in a corner and you can ask for more because what are they going to do? It's already, the genie's already out of the bottle. <laughs> so, yeah. so with you, with your fonts on your site, do you sell it by seats, which is per computer, right? Mm -hmm. Or is it matter about the project? I don't want to ever be on your bad side, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's why we have an IP attorney going to do this stuff because sometimes even I get confused. Um, it, it tends to be that you can buy it for a seat and you can use it on a project. Per project. Per project. Like, you, yeah, you couldn't, for instance, um, we had a, an alcohol brand contact us and they wanted to, they owned, can you believe this? They owned 125 different sub brands of alcohol, 125 different companies. They wanted to use it on all of those. So um, obviously they can't buy it once and, and do that. Or I guess if the terms were different, but so we put terms in for how many impressions this can get, how many seats, how many projects. And um, yeah, it's obviously are, gotta be a lot more for big companies like that that have lots of little companies. These are things we need to be looking at to make sure that we're covering ourselves when we're doing um, when we're buying things, right? So that small print, it is in that small print, right? In the, the copyright or the, the agreement, you're agreeing it's, to these. It's in the license agreement and it's, it's not small print because actually that can like get you in trouble too. So you can't, if you put things in small print, um, it can be construed according to what my lawyers have said. It can be construed as you're trying to hide information mm -hmm. or it wasn't easily accessible information. So it's, typically in normal sized, easy to find print. And yeah, it's a really good time, thing to ask because I mean, this has happened to me both ways where it just takes one, it just takes one man, it just takes one where you didn't pay attention and that you do some, some work for somebody and next thing you know, they come back to that company and they're asking that company for $50,000 and guess who that company comes back to? They come back to you and say, I don't remember you saying that this cost $50,000. Well, we just had to pay $50,000 and now we're going to get $50,000 from you. <laughs> right. So, so I had a client who said they wanted all the rights of something. So they've signed, a, I've signed a NDA and they're wanting, and then they said, well, I said, well, you know, I'm not creating a font for you. They, that was not, I don't do that. So if somebody need, needs that for a logo or something, I always say, Hey, I have friends who can do that. I just don't do that. That's not really fun to me. So not that all I do is fun because it's not all fun, but that's really, really not fun to me. Right. Uh, but I think some people think it's fun, but I would have connected them with somebody else if that's what they needed, but that's not what they needed. And then I said, they wanted everything. They wanted all the files, which I normally don't sell. You know, I, I, I keep them in the AI files or the InDesign files, but they wanted it all. Well, as that happens, that goes up in price, just like you're saying with the number of impressions. Um, it goes up in price because, again, if somebody's having that thing, um, whatever it is, you, it's not the same price it is as it is for, you know, Leroy down the street at the, you know, garage to use it as it is for Pepsi to use it, right? So when this company, I kept trying to say, well, you, we're not making a font, so you'll have to purchase the font and the seats for whatever. And he's like, well, we want it all. I'm like, okay, I still don't own the rights to the font to sell you. 
I can just point you to the company to do that. Right. And that was really confusing to my client. And I think it's funny that that is confusing to people, right? And I also think when I think about buying something, I bought stuff from Lisa Glanz. And I realized in that license agreement, I can use it for one project. So if I wanted to do um, a do the doggy daycare company that I do work for, and I wanted to do a little invitation, and she has these cute dogs connected to balloons, and they're going up in the air, and it's great. But I can only use it once. I can't repeat it all the time, every year, or for different um different dog companies. I can only use it once. That's what I'm paying for. That was that $15 or $30 or whatever it was. And I think that people forget about that part. They're like, oh, well, I own it. I can use it. Right. But it's not always, it's not yeah. like that. I think everyone's real loose about it. And I mean, let's be honest, once it's on your computer and you're like little drop down of fonts, you're not going to remember all the different licenses. I mean, at that point, it kind of just all blends together. Like, Let's be honest, guys. Like we, we all know, like once it's on there, like you can't really remember. You don't think about the licenses when you do stuff. But I guess for the most part, I think uh, the the God's honest truth is that most of the time people don't care. But it just takes once, you know. I mean, if I find someone that used the font and I don't remember them getting it, sometimes I'll go into a store and see it on a T-shirt. I don't care. I'm, but if you see it on some gigantic corporation or like when I went to Taco Bell. I had trouble giving them money for my tacos, man. Like I felt like they should be giving me the tacos for free. It was real hard to give them money for those tacos after I saw that they hadn't paid for the font. I'm like, why should I pay for your tacos after you didn't pay for the font? Um, <laughs> so yeah, you, you just gotta be careful. And, and the other way too, like as a designer and illustrator, um, I think, you know, most designers and illustrators have, you know, feast and famine months, especially if they're doing mm -hmm. freelance. And the thing is like, it just takes one or two projects a year where you're sensitive to the fact that some companies you work with are much bigger to get a lot more. I think we tend to think, oh, well, this big company will pay me 300 for this to do this thing for them or a thousand. I mean, whatever. But the reality is like, if a company feels big to you, like, I mean, big, 20,000, $30,000 is not out of the question. It, it only takes one time of you one or two times a year that you're aware of that and you have that conversation with the client for you to make an extra 20, 30 grand a year. It's just one conversation and for, for, for most of them. I found they're like, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and they don't come up all the time, but I mean, yeah. Think about all the time you can save on all these little side hustles. If you can just make 20,000 in one pop. Right. Year. But just it's being aware of licenses. Right. But it's also about as a creator, as somebody who's creating products, this is somebody who you should probably know an intellectual property attorney so that you can at least be able to talk to them. And when you have something come up, because if you are trying to make a living or one of your big buckets that you're getting your income from is, is creating products or fonts or uh, whatever, right? That your people are downloading those things, then you need to know about how people can use it, and and so that you aren't getting burned, right? Oh yeah, well that, there was like, I mean, and even if you're not selling digital products or fonts, you you know, there's a guy named Brad Woodard. Some of you might have heard of it. Um, he has a company called Brave the Woods. I don't think he'd mind me telling this story. Um, so I'm gonna tell it. Um, he walked into him or his wife walked into, I think. Uh, let's just say like a really big health food store and found that they had put his Santa Claus onto stuff. And he was like, I don't remember selling that to him. Well, he hadn't. And he ended up, um, you know, they, they sent an email to them and talked to them. And next thing you know, they have, um, you know, I think like I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and a big box full of free health food with his art on it arriving to them just because they had the conversation. So I mean, even if you're just an illustrator, you know, not just an illustrator, but even if you're in a position where you think that doesn't apply to me, well, maybe go talk to an attorney, spend the three or 500 bucks to just be sure that 500 bucks. Like I always try to think of it as like, think about like, if the money goes out, is there a chance it'll come back and bring its friends? Like talking to an attorney a little bit, there's a really good chance that attorney will tell you something that it'll, that money will come back to you. That 500 will come back with its friends. 
<laughs> That's a great way to look at it. So really, maybe that was another addition to this. these people that are contractors or people that you've kind of brought in this year is that intellectual property attorney. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I, I think, too, as, as I get deeper into the business or further along in it, you know, I look at my kids, I have an employee, I have a, we're buying a new house, and you just realize you've got to be so careful because it just takes one, one, not even bad, just careless or just careless, unthoughtful decision to really mess up your business. Like what? Like I really don't know paranoid. what you mean. Well, um, like had you not walked in and said anything to Taco Bell? Like, would that have been, that's not what you're talking about. No, but like, okay. Um, let's say. Like the person who used Brad's Santa Claus. Like they just thought, oh, he'll never see this. Right. Like, let's say you use someone's um, font, since we're talking about fonts, and you used it on a medium-sized company and you didn't pay attention to licenses. And that medium-sized company decides that they're going to litigate against you. I mean, um, there was recent. There was just last week a John Oliver was a late-night kind of funny talk show host guy. He talked about this. Um, people can tie you up in court for a long time. Mm. I mean, there's no law against it. They can make you just have to go through all this litigation for you know years, and it can cost you tons of money and attorneys. And so that's what I mean. Like it's probably not going to happen. You're probably fine, but like, gosh, you really want to like kind of have to look behind your back. You know, I'm kind of an anxious dude. Um, so like, I'd rather just not have to think about it, you know? So for us, as we're looking at buying new things or um, looking at things that we already own, what should we go back and look at? So if we've bought something from somebody, an illustration on creative market, it's probably a per project more than likely, unless you got the extended license, uh, usually those characters cover for a little bit more um, or more impressions but we really need to read those things what if we already have a font or, or like a brush mm -hmm. that we bought do we rebuy that brush every time I mean, touch, well it depends, you know again it depends on the license um, so for instance like for us we don't when someone buys a brush we're kind of like what's well, a brush it's kind of like buying a pencil you know like we don't we don't make people rebuy that I mean I think creative market technically does if you look at the license but mm -hmm. fonts are kind of different because they're so recognizable um or illustrations know, right they're recognizable yeah exactly like every time you know like wisdom script you know wisdom script every time that font is used it loses value because it slowly saturates the market until wisdom script is almost a bad thing right mm -hmm. so he should get paid every time someone uses it in a commercial capacity where a lot of people see it because slowly the value is being extracted mm -hmm. out of it until it hits a, uh, you know, a diminishing return. Right. And it's not making as much money anymore. Um, so I would just say like browse over licenses, you know, I mean, do a, you don't have to read them with a lawyer every time, but do a quick scan of them, make sure you, you keep them. They usually come with the products, right? Or we can go back on creative market and go read the license. Right. Yeah. And, um, and typically, okay, so I'm not a lawyer, so I obviously can't like say this is like legal advice, but like something that I've noticed that a lot of lawyers seem to say is if you can show intent to do goodwill in terms of how you did business, you're typically fine. You might have to, you might've made a mistake and you might have to pay something to fix something, but it's a lot worse if it's like just total negligence. You know, if you buy a wisdom script and you use it all over, you know, 50 movie projects, and you knew darn well that you should have paid for it and you didn't, that's going to, typically it seems like from talking to lawyers, that's going to get you in a lot more trouble than if you just made an honest mistake one time. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash design recharge. There's over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, or your MP3 player. I can't wait till December when I can really start listening and in, just ingesting book after book after book and they always give you a free something in December too so $15 a month is what I've paid for almost 10 years and I love Audible 
So one of the things that you have, I think, gotten really much better about it, maybe it's because the project manager, but I actually think it's even just this summer. I think it was divert, uh, delegating some of the responsibilities of different things. Um, but how do you manage your time? Like, do you use a calendar project or do you do, how do you, what, how do you prioritize? Well, I use Fantastical um, as a calendar, which if you don't have that, it's amazing. Lenny Terenzi from Hey Monkey Design, uh, he had mentioned it. And it's fantastic because you can just type into it. Like I could be like, podcast with Diane at 1130. And it will put it onto the date that you write in, just like from typing or even talking. It'll put it in. It will set the reminders. It will send the invites to other people. So um, I use that. And then every morning I do something called habit stacking. So uh, when I write my journal, I also write down, um, like the three priorities for the day. And I almost never get to them. Like lots of days I just get to one, but I always have three. And I always just, um, I tend to think of it as which thing influences money coming in the most, mm. but probably the way to think about it, but I, on a good day we'll do is to say, you know, there's that book, the one thing. And is there a book? Book, they, when I did that? No, when you were looking on the floor. No, I was looking for a book. It was called, it's called The One oh. Thing, and I was going to see if I could pull it out. Um, and you it got says, distracted, you, so I thought some big bug was coming towards you. No, no, the book, I was looking for the book. The book has a, a simple question you can apply to anything, and it just says, um, what's the one thing I can do in which by doing it, it makes everything else easier or eliminates mm. other mm. things? And there's been a couple times, like one day, I was so overwhelmed that I just walked around. You know I walk around a lot. Um, I just went on a walk for half the day and I thought about what's the one thing I can do. And that's actually how I figured out how to get a project manager. I was so stressed. There was so much stuff to do um, that I eventually realized how little I had to do. It was that I was making a video course for passive income for designers and there was like so much stuff to do, like editing videos, recording myself, doing the videos, uploading the videos, putting the slides together, doing all this stuff for it. I was overwhelmed and going crazy. And I decided not to work on it that morning and just think about how can I make this easier. And then I realized all you have to do is write the words down and read them into a microphone and someone else can edit, make the slides, upload it, do everything. And um, my gosh, it's amazing. If you're ever overwhelmed and you just take an hour to really think mm. about how you can make something simpler. Uh, I know I'm rambling, but the other question I think about is um, Tim Ferriss says, uh, what if this was easy? Mm. Sometimes that's really clarifying too. Just like, what if this was easy? What, what would it be like if it was easy to do this? Hmm. So with habit stacking, is that like a term or is that just your term? That's a term I learned from a nutrition app that I use. And it talked about if you have a, um, a new healthy habit, you're trying to get connected with something you already do. Mm -hmm. So for instance, I make coffee every morning. So while I'm doing that, I will clean my office every morning you know because like keep you do squats up. while you make coffee because now you're stacking the good thing with the thing you don't normally really want to do right exactly so, yeah yeah <laughs> okay so um this kind of goes with the walking thing so how and when do you think of new ideas new products or courses like do you take time in your week to think about that do you take time once a month or is it just random loosey-goosey uh, so I, I tend to do it on, we taught this in the recent version of the Passive Income for Designers course, um, is I tend to do like, I guess I'd call it branching. Mm -hmm. So if something works well, I'll then ask myself, how can I branch that off into smaller pieces that each one can make money? So as an example, we released a pack called the Mid-Century Procreate Brush Pack. It's 15 brushes. and it sold so well. And then I thought, okay, how can we branch this off? It's, you know, it's kind of like doing sequels or like rice -a started as rice -a and now there's like garlic and whatever and rosemary and all these different kinds, right? So I, I thought, okay, well, how can we branch off this Procreate pack? So then we're like, okay, well, for mid-century things, there might be a gouache one, there might be uh, pens, there might be mid-century textures, there might be uh, dry brushes, there might be, you know what I'm saying? 
So you already know something does well. So what are the... Can it, it's like the, Cheetos, like hot Cheetos, regular Cheetos, right? Little bitty Cheetos or something. It's kind of like baby brands off of that one Cheetos, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like if something does well, like then don't just move on and try to do it again, like with something completely different. Like the show, the guy, who's the guy that made show your work? Um, Austin Cleon. Right. Okay. So that did really well. Or, or steal, steal like an artist. Steal like an artist. And then he did show your work. Right. Looks the same. It's just a different color color. I mean, they all, they all have like 10 chapters. I think they're all with like his little scrawled handwriting and all the same format. Of course they are. Because why on earth, why on earth if he has a New York times bestseller that like every designer and entrepreneur can pull out of the top of their head, why would you change that? You, you do flavors, you know? Right. Right. So that, that sounds like a good book, Dustin Branching. Yeah. He's yeah. a better name probably. I don't know. I kind of like branching. Okay, branching really, it is. <laughs> because you don't think about it. We think that we have to reinvent the wheel every time, right? Yeah. And it, really, if this worked, then maybe we could see how it could work in a new way. I was just on a webinar before this, and this girl was talking about how if you have something that works, don't, don't not sell it again. Keep selling that thing. Try to sell it three times a year instead of just once a year. And then she also said, what else could you do that's similar, right? It's like this branching or it's like a series. We do this all the time. That's what helps makes a brand stronger, right? When we do series of things. We don't just have one ad that doesn't connect to anything else. You have something that connects in a, in a, you know, a six-month time frame if you're doing it for a client or something like that. Okay, so we got some other questions we got to get to in 15 minutes. Okay, um, so are there any kind of activities that you engage in regularly that help you plan or dream of this next project? So branching is one, but is there anything else? So you go for walks, um, but is there anything else that you do you do write in your journal every day. Do you go back through your journal? What kind of things? Just because we're thinking about 2020. We're thinking about the things we want to do. and We got to dream big. We also have to be practical. So you would dream big first and then you can worry about the practical stuff later, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, as far so would, as, oh, go ahead. As far as, as far as like ideas for things, I tend to try to, I just look for what people are requesting or there's demand for. I, so you listen. I listen. Yeah. I do a lot of, I, if, if people are on the site and they're looking and they're writing me emails saying, do you have anything like this? And we think about making it, you know? Um, and again, branching is kind of like listening to if someone, if everyone's buying a certain pack, okay, how can we make littler versions of that? How can we make bigger versions of that? How can we make that? Can we make that for different pieces of software? Could we teach something on how to do that? You know, if a mid-century Procreate pack does good, maybe a mid-century Illustrator pack. I mean, it sounds like really obvious, but people like overlook this and this applies to design or illustration or any, anything that you do in this field. Um, okay, so we have Illustrator, we have Photoshop, right? We have all those. Okay, can we teach it now? Okay, so then we did a paid webinar on it. It was like, uh, I think $97 or something. So then you do a paid webinar on it. Okay, can we write blog posts on it? Like, you know, it's a winner. So like put it into a bunch of every single version you can. So we did the webinar. Okay. Now we have recordings. Can we sell the recordings? Can we get transcripts of it? Can we get examples and pack it up and then sell that as a different thing? Um, because you know, then you're not betting and you're not hoping every time that you release something. Right. It's not, it's more of a, a proven thing. Right. right. Um, Noah, Noah Kagan from, sorry, I'll say this real quick. Noah Kagan from um, AppSumo and Sumo Me, he'd said, if you don't understand the levers in your business that make you money, then you don't understand your business. Hmm. So you, if you can't in your head immediately be like this, this thing, that thing, and that thing are all different things that when I turn the lever up or I turn the lever down, more money comes in or more money stops coming in. Hmm. That might be ads. That might be certain products. That might be certain sources of traffic. But if you don't understand that, then you're really at the mercy of, uh, you don't know if you're going to walk down the street and a bucket of money's going to hit you. Exactly. Yeah. You just don't know. So you want to find those, you want to try to pay attention, ask yourself, where are the levers? I love that. Okay. So one other thing that I love about you is that customer service is extremely important. 
And it always has been, I think. One of the things I love, the stories that you tell, um, I had an experience one time. It was not with Dustin. It was with somebody else. And I was so excited to meet this person. I get excited sometimes, you know. And I bought their product. And I have not bought their product since because <laughs> of the way I was interacted with. But this is what Dustin does. I'm Say, let's just pretend like let's do a role play. I have a side by side now. Not that anybody else could see, but when it's on the recording, they'll be able to see it. I'm like, oh, Dustin, hey, I just bought your, I did your webinar and I bought a whole collection of stuff. Like I brought these $300 worth of stuff. I love them. How do you respond? When we're at a conference? Yeah, we're, we're say we don't know each other. Yeah, so okay, yeah, you were with me and you mentioned I didn't even notice that I, that I do this, but I'll tend to pull out my phone and show pictures of my kids because... When someone says they bought a lot of stuff, I mean, you know, like when someone tells me they spent 50 or $100, like on retro supply, it's just a little business, you know? I show them pictures of my kids because I'm like, hey, like, I want to be like, hey, like, your money doesn't go to me, I don't know, buying fancy car. Like, it's, it went, like, here's my little girl. Wait. And I'll think, of, I'll think of something. You paid for her ballet lesson. You right. paid for her um, frozen, her frozen bike. <laughs> you paid for, um, you know, the sparkly shoes that she really, really, really wanted. Um, Cause that's how it feels to me. It really does feel like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it, you know, people have become extra abstract across the internet, but when you see them in person at conferences, you're just like, uh, you just realize a human being who worked hard for their money decided to give me some of it. And because of that, like my life is way better than I thought it would be. I um, love that. So have you always been like that? Has that mindset always been, how you lived? No, I think that just happened when I started meeting people at conferences. I just like started to become in awe. Like I'm like, wow, like a person. Uh, yeah, I think I just got really. But amazing. customer customer service was always important to you. You always tried to answer people, and right. Yeah, you know the weird thing is, is I don't think of myself as like a super people person, but for some reason we we've, we've done well at that. I don't. I guess it's bothersome to me to think about people sitting around frustrated. I mean, no doubt there's people that buy from us that are frustrated, um, like any business. But yeah, I just know how gross it feels when it happens to me. And I know how bad it feels when I see someone say, just out of pure negligence, we didn't do something for them. It's like, ugh, it doesn't feel good. I remember one time, even in the beginning, and I had connected you with Katie, and you were like, she writes really good customer emails back to them. Like, she's really good at um, customer service. And I, I just think that, you know, if, if somebody's going to treat somebody one way, how will they treat somebody like Coke or Pepsi, right? If they're going to treat the $15 person one way, you know what I mean? It's like, it tells a lot about your character yeah yeah um yeah I, I don't know how to answer that anyway it's just a good that's a good all right so next part of that is how do you connect with customers because you seem to do this really well it doesn't seem like you're connecting with customers it just seems like you're listening um and um uh, what are things you do to connect with them i don't know that was really the same question twice yeah, you know the weird the weird thing is I hear that I hear a lot that um people will tell me they bought from us because they resonate with either me, which I assume means through my emails that I'm writing or something like that, but I don't know. Oh, I'm kind of lost. I don't I don't really know like what we're doing. I You need to know that lever. You just need to listen to your own self. I do. It's like a blind spot for me. I'm not exactly sure. I guess like, you know, one thing that I always remember about, um, like I was talking to an email consultant the other day and, and he said, um, do you guys have a copyright? Have you ever worked with one? And I started apologizing and like, no, you know, like I've written a lot of this. I kind of try to think of myself as a copywriter. And anyways, I went on this long tangent of how we, how we had and being apologetic. And he's like, cause it's really good. And I was like, Oh yeah, I did write it. Um, yeah, I've been working on that, you know? Um, so maybe that's why like, but one thing that I read that I always think is, um, when you write emails, write them like you talk. Like mm. I think they said, mo I read a copyright tip that said most people will write a better sales page or email if they literally record themselves 
Like if they record themselves talking about the product mm -hmm. or whatever your business is, even if you're responding to a client who just reached out asking about potentially working with you, if you record your voice and then just dictate it, it'll often sound more human and warm than if you write. Hmm. So oftentimes I'll write, I'll try to think, I'll pretend like I'm writing you. Like I literally will think, pretend like you're writing to Diane or pretend like you're writing to Lenny, tend to be the two people in my brain. I'll think, pretend like you're writing to a single person. Huh. That's cool. That's a good idea. I do think you need to write it to, instead of the, the group, because it's just one person is opening the email. They're not like, hey, everybody, I got an email from Dustin. Let's read it together. We don't do right. that. When it's a fine balance too, because then you also have to be, um, you have to be salesy. I mean, you, you have to sell stuff. So you have to ask people to buy and you have to do a marketing things that are obvious that you know that the people know that it's marketing, but you have to do it. It's a weird balance. Well, it doesn't ever really feel salesy to me from you. So, and I think Amy would agree. We think you do this really well. You're mad to get Some it. People say that. I'm just like, wow. I, <laughs> Is that true for, is that true for most people? Cause I feel no. like we, we push on sales so hard. Yeah. I maybe, I don't think so. Okay. I got to ask this next. We got seven minutes. This is really critical. Okay. So you diversify your income streams as well. You have knowledge products, webinars, courses, you have digital products and physical goods too. I know I already said that. Um, I know you aren't running a design biz business, but many of your customers are, and we go through these lean times. It could be in the summer. Summer can be lean for us as well as the holidays. So as we head into the holidays, um, and maybe as we're planning for next year and planning for the holidays, I think if we can diversify our income streams to maybe have a product to sell during these times, which you think, oh, nobody's buying a pro nobody's buying a course, nobody's buying a webinar but you know something different. Can you tell us about the, the mindset and um, I can't remember what you called it. Do you remember what you called it? I can go get my notes. No, I, 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 think, I know what you're talking about though. So um, I think, so here's what happens during the holidays, in my opinion, this is what happens. We get into this time in November and if you're like me or anyone who lives in the United States especially, your brain starts to get activated and desensitized to buying, right? You're already mentally preparing for Black Friday and Cyber Monday and for Christmas sales and for all of that stuff, right? So you're thinking of all that stuff and your brain is relaxing. It's easing up on the idea of spending money. So if you're a designer right now, this is the time. Um, one of the best ways I heard it said, I heard it just a couple of days ago was, this is the one time of the year where it's okay to charge less for things without being judged. So if you, if you charge less right now, no one is going to think, oh, they're a cheap brand, they're a cheap designer, they're whatever, because everybody knows you get great deals this time of year. So you can unabashedly do things for a deal price if that works for you. I'm not saying like give your services away and make your life a hell because you have so much work and you're not making your money back. But for instance, like we are doing deep discounts on products because we know we're gonna make a lot of money in bulk but we're also going to acquire a lot of customers that are new customers because they're going to buy right now. And once someone has, for say your design business, once someone has done one project with you for your design business, they're like what, a thousand times more likely to come back and ask you to do more work in the future. So get them in the door with a super great deal right now. Because remember what's going to happen in January is you get the, um, the pendulum swings the other way, so to speak. So everyone says is hung over from spending money. So they say, okay, that's the last time I do that. I promise no more using the credit card for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas. I'm not going in debt this year again. I'm going to tighten up my finances. And, and you don't want to be the person that when they're tightening up their finances as a designer, they say, definitely don't need Diane. That's one thing we need to cut out. That thing that's costing us like $1,000 a month and we just cannot afford that. Like you want to you know, get your claws in or not, that's, that's a bad way to think of it. You want to get your hooks in, um, in the most gentle, positive, nice way possible into that client where they feel like they need you now. If mm -hmm. you just gave them a great deal on something and now they're like, let's say you did a, a discount on your restaurant menu design you did for them for their new year coming up, right? If you do that at a great price now, well, they're going to need it for all the different seasons coming up. Lock them in with like one good deal make all your money on the back end on the future ones. 
And it's also, you could say, hey, if you, you can do it for this price right now for one, or you could, I could do your whole year. You could sign the contract and get them for the whole year, but you're trying to pitch it to them now. So this is something that we could do even if we're in services industry. Absolutely. And I think the thing is like, we tend to think, oh, well, um, that's for Amazon or something like that. But any business, try to, try to, try to, try to apply it. I mean, I think one of the things to do is remember that any problem you have with making money, someone else has probably already had that problem. So who else has had that problem and how can you solve it? Um, you remember those CD clubs where you used to pay a penny? Yeah. Tell me if, if any of you guys are old enough to remember this. Remember Columbia, Columbia Record Club or whatever, where they'd say, for one penny, you can have 15 CDs, right? And then what happened after that? Then, then they were like fifteen ninety nine or twenty ninety nine a pop. And they required you to buy like eight of them. And they sent you, they said it was for a service to you. It was the record of the month. And they would send it to you without you asking for it. And if you didn't return it and package it up, which they purposefully made a pain in the butt, then they would charge you the full retail price of like eighteen ninety nine for this album. So, I mean, I don't know. Do I like that? I don't know. It's pretty cool to get the 15 CDs. I'm not sure what my parents thought about the other ones that came, but I remember that part. It's like, is there a way that you can like apply that to your own business? I mean, that's just one example, but think about all these things can be re repurposed. But I also think like sometimes when I've been done a quote in my, if I'm doing a bid for somebody, I don't, if they want a logo, I'm not going to just bid them for a logo. I also say, well, here's what I could do for your social media. Here's what I could do. Even if it's just branding, here's what I could do for a standard a stationary set or something. So that at least they're, I'm giving them and telling them that I do other things. And I usually also include a website. But it's like, oh, I didn't know you did that. That's what I get a lot. So sometimes it's just about telling people what you do. Um, and sometimes it's just about getting people in the door. Just like you'll do things to get people in the door. Most people are going to spend more money during November, December than they will. Definitely more than they will in January, February. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and it really is getting them in the door. And people buy things for themselves at this time. I think that's the other kind of uh, false notion that we think about. People end up spending more for things that are for their business or something like that, even if it's a knowledge product or something. So maybe there's a PDF or some sort of download that they could make that could make them some money as well. And if you can reverse the story for them, um, something interesting I've noticed is anytime you can make someone feel like it's not costing them money, it's just... It's just they're temporarily giving you money, but it's going to come back to them. Again, mm -hmm. money coming back and bringing friends, right? If you can make someone believe that, um, and I don't mean manipulatively, but like if you truly believe you can, then it's not going to be hard to sell. So um, I, know, and I know we're almost out of time, but quick poll that anybody listening, I don't know if we have two or 10 or 50 people on, but um, if you're a designer or an illustrator, have you ever um, had a project and you told someone the price and they said they couldn't afford it? Yes. Um, I'm guessing this is most of you, right? Yes. Lots of people happened? saying yes, yes, sure. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I've noticed that I have a couple of friends who've done this. They made a, they made courses on their own where they would show, here's how to do branding on your own, you know, through Canva or different things. Um, it's not going to be as good as if I do it. It's not going to be as good as if you hire someone, but if you are, not going to hire someone you can't afford the three thousand dollars i'm charging for this basic pack or whatever to do your stuff for you here's a course that i sell um that will give you the basics of how to do it without making yourself at least not damaging your brand you know let's try not to do that right um and every person that can't that gets a no should immediately be like well for 300 or 500 or 200 whatever you want it to be for for that price then you can down you can down sell them right or what would you call that? Um, not up It's just another tier. It's an, a different tier. There right. Some... You're like, you can't afford the 3000 No problem. I have something that's 300 or 500 and it will show you all like the best secrets that I can give you that, that you can do on your own that's going to help your business. You will make extra money from that. Again, you've made them a customer. And guess what? A bunch of these people, their business looks better. And then they have the money and they come back to you and hire you. 
or they start doing it, they realize how much work's involved, and then they come back and say, take my money, please, I didn't realize it, what I was asking of you. And then you can say, cool, I'll prorate you the price of this little course you made, because the course didn't cost you anything to sell, right? It's digital. So you could be like, cool, the 500 comes off of the, off of the 2,000, so now it's just 1,500. Oh, that's a great idea. I think every design company should do that. Should have that option. Because that happens to everybody, right? Like, mm -hmm. why are we letting those people go get away when 30% of them might just go buy that from you? Or you could always do a deal with somebody who's just starting out and you hand it to them and it's like a finder's fee or something that they will give you clients um, that are in this kind of uh, price range that it's not in my price range anymore, but it's, this will be good for you. I Absolutely. think that that's, that's something else. Okay. So, um, uh, we did that. That one's good. Cool. Done. Um, how do you, do you do anything to plan for next year? Set goals, anything like that? Do you just loosey goosey it? No, I think that every year when it comes like around January, like I know that it's hard to make sales that time of year. So, um, I tend to just let the, let the business and people take a breather and I'll write down goals. I don't typically review them later. So they kind of sit in my mind. <laughs> I can't tell you how many open text documents I have were like saved ones that are called untitled that have probably like brilliant million dollar ideas that I forgot about. But I typically have like ideas for writing stuff down that are kind of loosely in my head. Like I know like three things that I'm pretty sure we'll do next year. So then do you plan out like when webinars will happen or when courses will release? We've just started doing that more. Um, you know, they say whatever gets, what, what's measured um, improves. Mm -hmm. And so we've just started doing that. So like the past couple months and yeah, it's like just putting out a report of how much we make each day. And here's the goal is for the week. And here's how, how much we need to make each day. And did we make that? It's like magic. It's like when you say the number and write it down, all of a sudden, like it starts hitting it more often. It's crazy. Well, you start seeing where that lever is when you're hitting it, when you didn't realize you were hitting it, I guess, probably. Yeah, so and, last, yeah and you self-correct. You, you do. Know? Oh, we're, we're behind. Okay, let's self-correct a little bit. Yeah. And you're doing it on a continuous basis instead of once a year, because it's really hard <laughs> to self-correct once every 365 days, I think. Right. You'll be out of business <laughs> if you have a bad one. Yeah. Right. All right. So how do you recharge and what inspires you? These are fast. Yeah. Um, I recharge by <laughs> leaving you long messages on Marco Polo, <laughs> uh, going for walks, meditating. Um, probably the best investment of my thirties was going to a psychologist. It's like having someone audit your thoughts and tell you the things that you're telling yourself that are mm. completely wrong and crazy and helping you to just see yourself more clearly. Mm. So yeah. I love that. Okay. Um, what advice would you give your younger self and how old would you be when you would give yourself this advice? Um, I would say don't let your happiness, two things fast. Don't let your happiness depend on anything that you can't control. So if mm -hmm. someone has success and the success, for instance, lots of people will be like, Oh, like retrospect did so good. Um, blah, blah, blah. Well, you shouldn't, think that's cool if I didn't, wasn't directly responsible for it. So only make, depend your happiness on things you can control. Like you can't control if the client will buy from you, but you can control if you did the best presentation or you communicated mm -hmm. with them the best, or you kept yourself up to date. That's success. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, 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 the goddess fortune, the goddess, right? Like she decides if you like, if you, if you, uh, if it works or not. So that would be the, the one thing. And then the, um, the second thing would be, uh, there's, a, there's a quote from Jim Carrey where he talked at a college and he said, I wish everyone could be rich and famous so they could look from that side of the wall essentially and realize how empty and fruitless it is. I feel like sometimes I talk to people so much um, and I'm not saying like I'm on, that, I'm, I'm on that side of the wall, but what I mean is I feel like we're all fighting all the time to get stuff because we think it's going to make us happy and like, Every time you get there, don't you guys feel like once you get there, you realize it didn't actually, like it, it, it didn't actually improve things how I thought it would. And some people like chase fame or chase money or chase trying to get a design firm their entire lives. And then people get it and find out they're not even happy. Next thing you know, like they've killed themselves. Right. 
less dramatic, but probably sometimes. Yeah, for sure. All right, last question. What's next? Anything good we can look forward to? Isn't there some Black Friday sale you're going to be? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you do like Retro Supply, um, there's going to, we're going to be doing like 55% off. Whoa! Everything. Yeah. That's a ton! I know, because like, like I said, like, they're like, this is the one time a year, like, you have permission to be crazy and like, do the absolute most crazy discounts. So I'm like, yeah, we're going to do it. So yeah, 55, 55% off um, everything. Why 55? Because last year we did 50 and I wanted it to be better. <laughs> I love that. That's great. <laughs> uh, and that, that gives us room to go to go to 60 the following year. So really, if we went through and there's a ton of brushes that I want to get, are there more collections? Is, is, so as I'm trying to make the most of my dollar, what would you suggest I do? So if I want um, more Procreate brushes, is there a collection where it's like a whole bunch of them? Yeah. So we have like an essential Procreate brush collection. So got that that's, one. that's got tons of them. Um, like right now, like we're having some pre-Black Friday sales going on. Um, so right now we have the mid-century Procreate bundle, which is like all our mid-century brushes, which is based off that idea of branching. And that's typically 49. Well, if you get it now, you get it for like, you know, it's a good sale when I feel bad that I did it. Like I felt <laughs> like I was hurting myself inside. It was self-destructive. So we're giving it away for 50% off. Plus we're giving people like this best-selling gouache set that Adam Grayson, um, oh, did the yeah. artwork for. And that, that comes free when you buy this thing for 25 Or we did a branding webinar with Amir. Um, now that's over, but we did the recordings and we have all the resources from it. That was $197 um, for like, I think until midnight tonight. You can get it for 97 plus is how to draw portraits one free. Now granted, these are recordings, assets, and transcripts. You can't go to the live one anymore. But I mean, it's that's like- still, a, That's it's amazing. Like, it's like sitting down at a personal- sitting down personally with a mirror in in Sweden and having the dude talk you through his entire process. Right. I mean, if you can't make $97 back off of that, then I don't know what to tell you. So let's just make sure people know so they can go to retrosupply.com. And if you wanted the Emir thing, you could just type in E-M-I-R probably and it would search and it would get you there. Oh yeah, for sure. Yep. That's awesome. Okay. So look for collections there are fonts, there's all kinds of things on there. Fonts, right? brushes, textures, training, um, shirts. We're gonna have enamel pins that like for people that are VIP customers, they'll be able to get golden enamel pins with our little retro supply dude on them. Uh, oh, that's I'm looking awesome. That. Yeah, that should be fun. All right, so they can go to retrosupply.co and get these and I put all these links in the chat there will be below so that if anybody's watching this you can get it right here this will definitely be up for um for the holidays so it will be ready if, for people to listen to so you can go is there anything for passive income for designers what's next for that are you going to release it once a year I know I've already had people asking if you're going to do it again yeah so we just did that course uh well you, you would help me get it done so that was released um July. Yeah. So that's going, we're going to do a Black Friday deal on that. Again, um, it, it'll have like one office hours. We did live office hours every week for like six weeks or something. But um, on the future ones, um, on this Black Friday one that we're going to do, you can buy it for a discounted price, like a super great deal. It's just not going to have as many office hours. But I mean, we have tons of recordings and videos and worksheets and slides and um, so people Maria, that have made a lot of money are on yeah. talking about how they did it. Maria asked, no more podcast, Dustin? I don't know. I, I, I keep trying it. It's something about its heart. You know, that's one of those saying no things. I really want to do it. But it's yeah, a lot. the Honest Designers podcast, yeah. It, I actually am really sad I don't do it because it feels good to have people really like something. I know people like that podcast. You mean the like, passive income for designers or the honest designers? Well, I'm, I'm assuming that um, Maria is talking about the, passive. On, the passive income for designers yeah. one because that was just like 14 episodes yeah right. and people loved it should do more of it but you know that's like how do you do it you gotta say no to stuff for a while I really want to do it though <laughs> I was like wait you're not you're still doing honest designers so we yeah. can still catch you there at honestdesigners.com 
com dot com what what am i saying com dot com today's my first day on the internet <laughs> i don't know why i have to do that with a southern accent um no offense mom um all right so you can also on follow him on twitter retro supply co facebook get retro supply instagram retro supply and then also uh, there's a passive income for designers on instagram also but the website is passive income for designers.com and you can get on his email list and then he'll send you information about this and some of these special deals you want to get on the email list and you get some brushes if you haven't ever signed up for a retro supply you get free brushes right for signing up you get free brushes and tons of stuff for signing up um you can see i know a lot of people wanted to see what other people did with it you can there's a customer showcase area now if you go to the navigation you can see like tons of work from amazing people that have used um the products so you can see how other people have used it yeah it's, it's really neat it truly hey, is maybe i can add my victor broom stuff once i get done yes send it to me and we'll put it on there awesome Oh, and um, Amy says your emails are fun too. Dustin is good at copywriting. They are short and sweet and full of deals, she says. Amy's a great cheerleader. She is. I seriously feel like my life is so much better because of Amy. Me I too. Love you, Amy. <laughs> for, for real. Seri like, seriously. All right. So, guys, thank you so much for being here. Dustin, thank you always. I'm so glad you're my friend and I'm glad you go off on rants on Marco Polo with me. I'm happy about it. Um, you do get real passionate and I'm glad it's sunny there today. You need more sunshine for sure. We all do. Well, thank you for everything. Thank, thanks for listening to all of my rants. I know you do. I could see you watch them all. I take up so much of your time telling you my feelings on things. So thank you. Thank you for everything you do for the community. Thank you for having me on. Feels good to have someone ask you questions and be interested in what you're doing. You're well, sweet. you're doing I just, tons, I appreciate tons of things. You. Well, I appreciate you. And thank you for sharing the insight into everything. So oh, I just threw my little cord at my face. Um, next week, it'll just be me. And we're going to be talking, we, me and the mouse in my pocket are going to be talking about the, pro <laughs> the power station. So if you want to know more about that, it's going to start January 2nd. There's going to be a deal for design rechargers and, um, not a 55% off or anything, but there will be a deal. And then it uh, there will be two weeks to sign up. And I'm giving it a little bit more because it is the holidays, but we'll see. So we had a really good group last time and I'm excited to see, um, I'm excited for y'all to hear some of the things that they said. So Dustin and was- that part was of really good. I was, part, I was part of that first one. It was, and not even joking, like, like not, not even, um, just trying to be complimented like it's tr absolutely true is the best it was the best decision i made all year like business-wise truly right like i mean it, it, you'll get your money okay i'm gonna do the 55 percent off <laughs> i'm just kidding i am gonna do that it truly <laughs> did though it was like one of the it was the best thing i did probably last last year business-wise well good well and you had the the you hired the project manager girl right it's like a domino effect all yeah. sorts of all right. Well, guys, I'll see you next week. Thank you guys for listening and hit like and subscribe and tell people about it. Share this with somebody else and then we'll jump back on at the beginning of January. Hope you have a good Christmas and Thanksgiving. Bye guys.